Well, hey everyone, Bob here again, and welcome back to the channel. Well, we are at the final segment of the kind of get started episodes before we're going to actually start working our dog on a decent amount of practice for the blood tracking. And what I want to talk about today is the reward. Now, this might be the most important part of your tracking process because this is what's going to motivate your dog to actually want to do this. So let's backtrack a minute here. We got to look at what kind of dog we have. Are you working a hunting dog, a tracking bred dog, a dog that breeders and people over all the generations have instilled some natural instinct to actually want to track and follow blood? Or are we talking about a designer dog, some kind of a pet that you've got within your home that does have a dog's nose and we go back far enough, got that same scent system going on as the hunting dogs. So we got to think about what is a high value thing for your dog. If you've got that dog that you've been playing in your house and he's got these little snossages treats and he loves those things, you might want to use those. If you got the dog that really likes some popcorn because you've been playing on the couch with him and you toss him some popcorn, hey, maybe that'll work for you. But if you've got a hunting dog who already has some drive and he is interested in this stuff, you might be able to tone things back and just find that high value food item like Scott talks about the hot dog or snossage treat or something that the dog doesn't get all the time. But what we're going to talk about is using that treat to really motivate the dog. I would suggest not using that treat every day in your house for just general rewards. When your dog does something good or you come home from work, get something different for those. We want the dog to be extremely excited to want to do this tracking. So the reward is super important. So find yourself a high value reward keep that reward for your tracking and get a decent amount of it we're going to work through all these steps here and you're going to use some of the reward to get the dog going along the way if it's not initially motivated to follow that blood scott shows how he took little bits of hot dog and put those with each blood track to kind of get the dog to connect the dots that hey each blood track or drip of blood or spray or whatever it is there's going to be a little reward to get to the next one you might have to work through that process if you're working more of a pet type breed. Some of the hunting dogs and some of the dogs that actually have the tracking stuff bred into them, you're going to be able to probably get through that stuff quicker. But we're going to work through all that in the future episodes. So right now, we're finishing this stuff. You got all your supplies ready. You've got your command picked out. And now you've got your reward picked out. Hopefully you've got your dog picked out or you already have the dog. So with that said... Let's get ready. In the next episodes, we're going to actually start working the dog through the actual blood tracking process and shaping the dog to look for that reward at the end of that bloodline. Ah, pump my brakes. Not done just yet. If you haven't done so, go ahead and leave me some comments. Have you started any of these processes? Are you having luck? Are you having problems? Are you having setbacks? Also, take a look over at Versatile Gun Dog with Scott Brozier and look at how Scott's doing this. You're going to see some of the things that I do for the at-home kind of hobbyist person who's trying to get better odds with getting their dog to work on a blood trail versus how Scott does this as a professional. So take a look at both of these and you may find it most beneficial to actually combine some aspects of both of these. What I'm going to suggest is you're going to need to set aside maybe five minutes, three days a week at first to get this going. Like anything, practice makes perfect. And the more you work on this stuff, whether it's the commands, short tracks or whatnot, but the more you work on this stuff, the more opportunities you're going to have to get that dog to move along quicker and get yourself ready for hunting season. So with that said, go ahead, hit that like, subscribe. You definitely want to follow because everything's really going to pick up now. And you guys are going to want to see how we get this dog going along on the blood trail and we make things a little more difficult for them and we're going to make them work for this. So see you on the next episode.